Hey friend, today we are looking at an updated rig for my Fujifilm X-H2S. About a year ago, I put out a video of my rig build for the X-H2S, really loved it, but since then I've made some upgrades and I wanted to just walk you guys through those. And in the process of making this video, I made it a few weeks ago, I actually broke my X-H2S. I sent it in for Fujifilm for repair. If you guys saw the video on my channel, I kind of talk about why this happened, but essentially there was an issue where I fried the HDMI port with the V-mount battery that I was using and I believe this happened just due to plugging in the cables in an incorrect order or leaving them plugged in I'm not exactly sure but feel free to go watch that video as I feel like it is helpful and a bunch of people left some really awesome comments and just kind of explaining best practices for using v-mount batteries to prevent um, breaking your camera like I did so without further ado let's get into it Okay, so starting off, we have this base plate situation. It's the same as the last rig, but it's made up of three parts. It's a nice rig base plate, and then a small rig Arca Swiss quick release plate, and then on the bottom is the Kessler quick stand mini. Next up, we have this dual 15 millimeter rod hinge from small rig, and mounted to that is the Nitsi V mount plate. I went with the Nitsi V mount plate because it has both USB C as well as D tap and the 8 volt port on the side. I'm gonna make use of that for my monitor, and it's relatively just one of the smallest V mount plates out there, so I wanted it to be as compact as possible, and this one is gonna snug right up behind our camera. So now that we have that complete, here's the view from the side. Just kind of showing you guys where we're at so far. We're trying to keep this thing super compact. And then there's the lever on the side there where you can kind of hinge down the battery as it's connected. That's super helpful for taking in and out the flip out screen uh, before and after you are done shooting. Okay, so now here we are adding the rods. These are just some short rods from Small Rig. I believe we're gonna use these to mount follow focus as well as my side handle. These just slide right into the Nicey Rig base plate and can get quickly tightened down with the screws. Here we're gonna go ahead and add the Fujifilm X-H2S and you'll see because of the quick release plate we added, this is gonna snap into place just like that and the camera is now on the rig. I wanted this to just be able to come on and off really quickly and that is one of the main features that I highlighted in my first video. You guys can just already see how compact this is looking. I love how close the Nitsi V mount plate gets to the back of a camera and it actually butts right up against that eyepiece, which I really love. Hey, I'm going to quickly interrupt this video and just say that the sponsor today is my own shop. If you guys do not know, I do sell some LUTs along with a DaVinci Resolve Power Grade in my store that basically helps you color grade really quickly. I've been selling these since I launched my YouTube channel for about the past year and it's been amazing to see how many of you guys have purchased them and started to use them on real projects. I thought it was really cool. Actually, this last weekend, I met one of my subscribers at a wedding and he kind of told me he works in video production in Kansas City and is using my LUTs all the time on Fujifilm footage as well as actually Canon footage that he's shooting on the C70 as well as C-Log. And I thought that was really cool just to hear kind of the versatility of my LUTs and how he's loved using them just to get um, a really quick kind of basic grade on real projects. And so if you guys are interested, I will link my store down below and we will get on with this video. Next up here is the monitor situation, and a few of these parts are different from the last time. And so the first thing is this top handle. It is the Nitsi Little Stinger V2 handle. I went with this one because it's a little bit more compact than my last one. I liked that it was a little bit shorter, as well as having the NATO rail, which helps it come on and off really quickly. And then finally, the Nitsi swivel monitor mount is new. This allows me to access the 12 volt port on the monitor that was previously covered up by the more bulkier hinge monitor mounts. And so here we have the battery solution. This is the 99 watt hour mini V mount from Small Rig. They did actually send this out for this video. I reached out to them seeing if they would be interested and they kindly sent it over. I really love just the overall compactness of this battery as well as the ports that it provides. And so it does provide those barrel jacks and USB and USB-C on the top, as well as D-tap on the side. And it also does have a percentage reading on the back. So you know exactly how much battery you have left. A lot of other V-mounts and just have a few dots on the side and it's hard to tell whether you have 25% or 5%. And so thanks again to Small Rig for sending that out. 
you guys will see I added this side handle to the side. This is done using a rosette adapter that was in my last video. I went ahead and moved the handle to this side because we are going to move on here to adding a follow focus. This was something that several people mentioned in my last video. They wished that I would have shown the rig with a follow focus, and so I just wanted to add one to this video. I have been kind of on and off shooting with this one that I'm currently borrowing from a friend, and I'm definitely liking it paired with these cine lenses from Suray with the threads on the side. I really loved getting to try out using a follow focus. I don't think I'll use it on every shoot, but for now I'm really liking this one that I have been trying out from Tilta. And so here's the current state of the rig. I'll just kind of show you guys from all sides what it's looking like. Again, it's super compact. Really am loving the look, especially with the Nightwalker lenses from Suray on there. And we're just gonna finally move on to plugging in our cables. And so this is something that I touched base on in my V-mount warning video that was a few videos back. And basically just landed on the order of the cables really mattering when you plug them in. So you always wanna plug in your power cables first and then finish off with your HDMI. And so right here, I'm plugging in this 12 volt cable to the V-mount plate. And it's actually plugged into the eight volt port on the Nitsi. And I did talk to Andy Cine and they said that it is plenty of power to power the monitor. And so you guys will just see me kind of hiding the cable underneath and then kind of running it up the side. I think this really helps keep everything compact and kind of the cables out of the way. For powering the camera, I am just gonna be using one of the Fujifilm batteries on the inside instead of using a dummy battery. And I am gonna opt for using USB-C from the Nitsi V-mount plate to provide power to the camera. I went with this because I often shoot with my camera on a rig as well as off. And I also don't love that when using a dummy battery, you have to keep the battery door compartment open. Um, not the best for weather sealing and just shooting in environments where dust or water could get in there. And so I am gonna be using this USB cable I do kind of tuck it underneath here like you will see because it's this coiled cable and then we'll run it back out the side and plug it into the camera and we're just gonna go ahead and power it up. And so we're gonna start by turning on the camera and then our monitor as this was best practice. And then we're gonna finish off with the HDMI cable. So just so you guys remember, it's last in, first out. So this is gonna be the last cable we put in and it'll be the first one we take out before powering down our camera. Last thing I forgot to mention is just this little cable clamp for the USB-C port. This actually came with the Fujifilm X-H2S and I have started using it with the rig just to provide a little bit more protection to that port. And so you guys will see me kind of screwing into the side there and then you can just add your USB-C cable back in. I think this just gives me a little bit more peace of mind using that as a way to protect that port. And I think that is it. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you guys want to go watch my initial build with the battery banks, I will link that video below. But until next time, um, just let me know any questions that you guys have down below. I always love to answer. If anything wasn't super clear in this video, I would love to clarify. So just let me know your guys' thoughts and I will see you in the next one. Peace.